Okay. <clears throat> Today is the 30th of January 2009. Um, we are in uh, Hudson Falls, New York. Um, my name is Wayne Clark and I'm with the uh, New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs and we are doing an interview today, a home interview with Mr. Osborne. Ozzy. Okay, sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth? Howard W. Osborne. I go by H.W. My place of birth is Whitehall, New York. I'm <laughs> very, very proud of it. Although it's not much to be. Okay, and when were you born? I was born in 1925, 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> did you go to school at, in Whitehall? I went to school in Whitehall until I was a junior. And I completed my junior year and then I had to transfer <laughs> to Buns Falls with my mother because she had moved down six months before that. She got a job at the GE because the World War II was on and she went to work for the GE. She had to have living money. So she took the job and she was quite elderly. Okay, what, was your father uh, deceased? Yes, he had been in a car accident and the accident finally took him. Okay, so you graduated from high school in Glens Falls? I have two Diplomas. I have a war service diploma because I was drafted out of my senior year okay. in high school. Okay. Now, what year was that? That was 1943. Okay. Now, do you remember, going back a little bit, do you remember where you were and what your reaction was when you heard about the bombing of Pearl Harbor? I was at the YMCA in Whitehall with a bunch of fellows uh, my age and maybe a, a bit older, mm -hmm. but all waiting to go in the service. Uh huh. Okay. Now, uh, you were drafted in 1943. Were you drafted into the Army? Navy. Into the Navy. Okay. The it tough time thinking what branch of the service it was land or sea I would I would hit the, uh, the branches where the Japs were uh -huh. hit the beach and or I would go on the shores of other beaches didn't make any difference. Okay, going going back to uh, going into the Navy, uh, whereabouts did you go for your basic training? Basic training was Samson. Okay. Samson, New York. Now, was that uh, your first time away from home? Yes. Okay. And I. boxed out there. Oh, did you? Okay. Now, how long was that basic training? Was it like six weeks, eight weeks, or? I'm pretty sure that I had eight weeks. That would be 
two months. Yep. Okay. And there was awful cold that year. Was it? <laughs> no, like we had now. Uh huh. Okay. Once once you completed your basic training, whereabouts did they send you next? On leave. They gave me a leave of three days. Mm -hmm. Now, before I went home, they, the, the time was up and, and I was scheduled to be transferred out while I was boxing. I boxed the championship bout and I went up against a, a kid from Pennsylvania that had already won the Golden Gloves championship. Well, I didn't make out so well with him, mm -hmm. and, but I, I lasted the the three round period and I earned uh, a 48 hour pass, a steak dinner and a carton of cigarettes. <laughs> I couldn't accept the, the cigarettes because I didn't smoke. <laughs> My jaw was, was so badly damaged from the the champ that I fought, I didn't beat him, but I gave him one hell of a fight, uh -huh. and I was only 18. <coughs> and I didn't go home because I couldn't, uh, I didn't. Oh, I don't know. Something happened out there, and I couldn't go. Oh, I couldn't go home because it snowed too much, and the snow plows couldn't even get out. Oh, so it was a waste of time fighting that one match. Uh huh. But it taught me a lot. Okay. Now, uh, after Samson, where did they send you? West Coast. I went out through the, um, the Wild West area, the Great Plains. Mm -hmm. And when I, and I went cross country in the cattle car. Oh, that's about the name of it. Okay, and once you got out to the West Coast, uh, did they send you to any kind of a training? Additional training? No, just overseas. Okay. And I was a radio man. I had earned the radio tra track, and I liked it. But once I got overseas, I didn't want any part of it mm -hmm. because the radio shack was below decks. I see. And nobody wanted to be below decks. World War II. Yep. They wanted to all be topside. Okay. Now, uh, you went from from California to the Pacific? Yes. Did you stop in Hawaii at all? No. Okay. We had, we had to get out to New Guinea. Okay. And New Guinea was... Uh, the most backward country in the world. Uh huh. And I went out there, and as soon as I got there, I I just knew that there was going to be a lot of fighting, and there was. Mm hmm. So you you were on shore. You you weren't on on board ship. Well, I, I was aboard, aboard ship, and I went overseas. 
and the U.S. as General Harry Taylor. Okay. And I got over there safely. Brought me right into New Guinea, Ladava Bay and Melanie Bay. Okay. And how long did you stay in New Guinea? I was there for about six months. Okay. And I had some bad stuff fighting in New Guinea. Okay, I'll stop it for a minute. Okay, you're in New Guinea, and uh, <clears throat> you said there was some bad fighting there? Well, one of the roughest spots for fighting in World War II was over the mountain, what we call See, if you had a map, you'd see where Gamma Dodo and Melanie Bay is. Mm -hmm. And you go up over the mountain, and that was, and the other side, that was the fiercest fighting. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know who they were, but the, some of the, uh, somebody called for help. You know, the, the too many Japs, mm -hmm. and they were killing too many Americans. So, the, uh, the lieutenant, the first lieutenant that I knew of, I happened to be there. I, I was lifting weights at the time. See, mm -hmm. I, I was always a, a guy that trained. Mm -hmm. Like uh, that one one picture that I had with five five men. In it. That was nineteen forty two mm -hmm. and forty three. Us five guys, two of us. Trained all the time and exercised. I can show you the picture afterward. Okay. And while I was overseas, I was told that if anything come up, anything special, if you need any fighting, please contact me. Mm -hmm. So I contacted this guy and I said there was just a, a man from the other side of the mountain that said they could use some more men. The Japs are coming in pretty strong. And he said, would you be willing to go, Ozzy? And I said, well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> just as long as you give me the, the right ammunition and mm -hmm. guns and everything, I'll go over the mountain. So. Me and a few other fellows went over the mountain. Now, I should know the name of that community, but I haven't done much, you know... Uh, Researching it? Yeah, because, well, I killed a lot of men over and I'm not very proud of that. Okay. And I'll tell you some more stories before you leave here you won't believe. Okay. But there was fighting in New Guinea. Mm -hmm. Me, I was fighting, killing. And then from there, there was a a fellow that I had met who was uh, uh, well, he, he interviewed me over, so you might say. Uh -huh. 
and he wanted to know where I was from and how long I was going to be there and a lot of things, I, answers I couldn't give him. Mm -hmm. I w was just there uh, like somebody come and got me and told me to go and chase that uh, New Guinea man off the property. Well, I didn't know what I was going to run into. Now, one time, I was asked to, to go on a, a duty like that, and uh, the man wanted to fight me. Well, I didn't want to fight it because I knew I'd have to kill him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want any killing if I could get away from it. Well, that was a, a short story for me because my life, there was a lot of killing on my part while I was overseas. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't very pleased with it, but I couldn't do anything about it. All I could do was shut my mouth and pray that I wouldn't have to do any more, mm -hmm. but I found out I was wrong because what was happening is, and this has probably never been told, the men that were overseas were looking for the women where they could get sex. Mm -hmm. Now, I was told don't touch any of those women, Ozzy, because you're liable to get some kind of a bad disease. Mm -hmm. And I saw what some men did do. They got their sex, but they got sent home. Some of them got sent home in a box. So. Bob Hope was overseas, mm -hmm. and uh, Margaret, Margaret, a singer, and I, I enjoyed her, and I enjoyed Bob Hope. Bob mm -hmm. Hope was a good man. He, no, no, you saw them in New Guinea. In New Guinea. Okay. Yes. New Guinea. And then there was, uh, yeah, I wanted to fight, but I wanted to fight like this, you know. Mm -hmm. I could call you back and tell you where I, where the fighting was in New Guinea. Mm -hmm. I could look at it. Uh, a map? A map, and I've got some buddies that were overseas, and they could tell me where over the mountain would be. Mm -hmm. All I know is I've heard it called. Okay. Now, you were, you were there for about six months doing this? I was there back and forth two, three times. Mm -hmm. I spent, I had two days and I'd have a full two years in New Guinea and the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Now, when I went from New Guinea, I went up. You heard of Lady Gulf? Oh, yes. Well, I was at Lady <clears throat> Gulf. And I hit the beach there. Uh, well, I, I hit the beach. Couldn't wait to hit the beach mm -hmm. because, you know, at that time I was, I think I was. 20 years of age, and 
everybody uh, you met wanted to know what you were doing there, where you're from, you know, the old story. Yeah. So I went from New Guinea to October 20th, 1944. That was the Philippines, wasn't it? Lady Gulf. Mm -hmm. Was the fighting bad there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, it, it, when you hit uh, Lady Gulf, you were you were on board ship. You were you were on the beach fighting. Yeah. Okay. What kind of weapon did you carry? Well, at the time, I had a, a like a rifle. I was given one just before I hit the beach, before the ramp went down. Mm-hmm. Was it one of the? Was it the M1 Garand? I think it was. My I messed up a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> well, it's because of the way I come back. The I I killed two men. And the, the shore of, I think it was Tokyo Bay, was there a Yokohama Bay mm -hmm. and the Yokosuka area? See, I can remember those things. But, but that, that was Japan. That was Japan, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I was in... Right there in Japan. Okay. And two fellas had had rifles. Mm -hmm. They were night watchmen. And I don't know how I got there, but I had to I had to go there and get up on the shore and try to get back into the woods somewhere and hide with this other fella. I used to know the name of the, the ship, the American ship that hit there. And it was either the Yokosaka something in the Okaska area. Mm -hmm. And I went out in the morning and I got out of the, the little boat into another bigger boat I guess we got lost. Mm -hmm. So we were coming back, and these two Japs fired at us. Well, they weren't very good shots because they didn't hit us. And they were just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we were terrified. And I said to this other guy, and he had, he definitely had a, a rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got me one. And I said to him, he said, I think I know where I can get a gun. I can steal one. I know where one of our, our men, Americans, were killed and their gun
guns were taken away. So I, I was a pretty good swimmer. And I come up in back of these two guys. And when they decided they were going to fire at us and kill us, and I knew this is what they had to be thinking. Mm -hmm. I never gave him the chance. And it was around nine o'clock at night. And one of them comes sneaking by my partner. And I saw him. And I grabbed him and I put him in the air. And I brought him down over my left knee and broke his neck mm -hmm. and that was the end of him. And then the other one came in and he was yipping yapping in Japanese, so I knew where he was. And I made a little noise, and he come after me, and I was standing behind a, a good-sized tree. He couldn't tell. He couldn't tell me or he couldn't shoot me, but he did try to kill me. Mm -hmm. So when he tried to kill me, this turned me on him. Being a young man, I didn't think of anything. Mm -hmm. I had to get rid of him. So I did the best I could in that area. Okay. And I killed him, so uh, I killed a lot more when I hit a few beaches out there. Mm -hmm. Now, when this happened, what, was this in 1945 at that point? No, no, this was way before that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this isn't the paper that I want. Would you like to see my discharge paper? Okay. Okay. All right, I'll uh at the end of the interview, I'll have you hold that up and I can zoom in on it also. All right. Okay, um, so you were, at, next you went to the Philippines? Or, or where did you go after Lady? After Lady Golf, that is the Philippines. Right. I went to Lingayan Golf. Okay. That's part of the Philippines. Okay. But... I, we're ahead of our story. Okay. I went up to the Philippines and I was introduced to 
General MacArthur. Mm -hmm. You did you ever meet him? No, I never did. Uh, no. Well, I worked with Ike quite some time. I don't know how long. Here, here's a picture. Do you want to, do you want to hold that okay. open and you can sit there? You want to hold that open and I'll zoom in on it with the camera. Yeah. Douglas MacArthur, 1944, Pacific. I'm sorry that I didn't get more. Okay. Now, are you in that photograph at all? No. In the background? I'm in the, in the background, but you can't see me. Okay. Our, Is our, this close enough? Yep, I got it. Okay, that's good. That's good. You can put it down. You can you can put it down. I got it. Oh. Okay. So you actually got to meet him? Oh yeah, I worked with him. I was on his barge. He asked me to work on his barge. He he saw me fighting. Yeah, I knocked out seventy nine jigaboos. As I told you earlier, you know what that is. Over the, I was overseas. The, the colored boys, there was only a couple of good ones over there mm -hmm. the, in my area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so what exactly did you do with Mag for MacArthur? You worked on his barge? Yeah. Um, There was a place called the Intermezzo Club. You see, what people didn't know was General MacArthur had a lot of real estate in the Philippines. That's why he was so interested. Mm -hmm. And he, he was just... He'd do anything for, for anybody out there. Mm -hmm. he, personally, I think he was a great man, and personally, I think he could have been President of the United States. But that haberdashery man fired him. Yep. Now, none of us veterans appreciated that. Not a bit. We saw Art MacArthur go out with a gun by himself when he shouldn't have. He he was fearless. And I asked him afterwards, yeah, I know he liked me. <laughs> I said, Doug, I don't mean Doug, I never call any man by his first name. General MacArthur, why did you go in the woods looking for that Jap? And he told me, and everybody heard him, just to let you boys know that I'm fearless. You guys come out here from all over. You, you put your life on the line, and you don't know me from anything. All you know is, you know General MacArthur, he smokes a corn cob, corn cob pipe. Now, I was supposed to go to Australia. Three times and leave because I was hitting beaches, I was fighting jabs hand to hand and the people out there overseas knew it. I was fighting all the time. I was working on a horizontal bar. I was lifting weights and uh, General MacArthur's barge, when he called, I had to go. Mm -hmm. And it was all right. And it was just one of those things, oh, was a war going on, and 
we had to be of service at the time that we needed, that we were needed. Mm -hmm. And I used to wrestle, I used to box, box in the middle way. Okay. Now, uh, where, where were you when the war ended? When they dropped the atomic bombs? Were you still over there? Or? Oh, yeah. I think that I was either in the Philippines. I think I was in the Philippines. What was, what was it like when you heard they dropped the atomic bomb? Was there a lot of celebration and when you guys heard the war had ended? Yeah, only we were thankful and we didn't do much celebrating. But there was some celebration that the war had ended. Mm -hmm. Now, I was at the signing. Oh, you were on board ship when they, they... Yes. Okay. Now, do you remember what ship that was, the name of the ship? Yes. It was the Ancon. No one had ever heard of the Ancon. Uh-huh. Also, we received, I guess it was radio news, that if the Japs come into, I think it was a strait. I forgotten what strait it was, but I knew the strait. I'd been on it. Hey, we we were expecting a Japanese force to come in and fight us. <laughs> And we were told that if they come in and they got the best of us, go out to straight. That's our only chance if we want to be, be alive. There's no other way we can stay alive if we don't go out that one straight. That's mm -hmm. the only straight that's available. Okay. And we had a pretty good idea what um, now I have to do some thinking. You know who they considered the hotshot commander in the Pacific back in 44 and 5? That was Admiral Nimitz, wasn't it? No. He was the big shot. Mm -hmm. Nimitz. <laughs> but the fighter was... Oh, dear. Ah. Boy, you, you interviewed a lot of men, have you? Uh-huh. Who have you interviewed? I'll tell you which one it is. Oh, you mean, we haven't interviewed any of the the uh, commanders or admirals. We've just interviewed the, you well, know... Who they, all right, who they work for. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't recall off the top of my head. The Fifth Fleet. Mm-hmm. You know who that is? No. I can't think of it either. Oh, dear. Not Rickover. Huh? It wasn't Admiral Rickover. No. No.
Well, anyways, you weren't attacked, right, during the sign? No, we, we, didn't, we didn't get attacked, but what we think happened was that we were going up the straight and... Was it Admiral Halsey? Halsey. Okay. Yeah, he was the boy. Halsey. I was, I would be safe with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, so he's dead now too, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I listened to uh, some of the stories about Halsey because we didn't get out of there. I didn't get home until... Uh, What does my discharge paper say? Okay, let's see. You were discharged... January. Uh, January... Uh, 1946. Yeah. In January, right? Yep, 27 January, 1946. Yeah. yeah. Now, were you involved in any of the occupation at all? No. Okay. No. When the war ended, did you go right back to the States, or did you stay over there for a while? No, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. When the war ended, when did the war end? It ended in August of 45. August of 45. I didn't get home because it took a long, long time for me to get out of that area. Mm -hmm. There was danger there. There was fighting. Well, a lot of men, you know, got killed late. Yeah, even after the war was ended, there yeah. was still pockets of resistance. Okay. When you did when you did get back to the states, where did they discharge you from? Lido Beach. Okay. New York City. Okay. And, and then you came back to uh, this area here. Yeah. Okay. Did I didn't you... get up here until Christmas time. Now, now, what rank were you when you got out? I was just a seaman. Okay. I wanted to get home again, and I wanted to see my mother, and I'm glad, glad I did. Okay. She, she was a, a sweetheart, and she waited for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you got home, uh, did you um, make use of the GI Bill at all? Did you go back to school, or? No. I didn't. Did you, uh... I wanted to go to college, but my grandfather was, was sick. He had heart trouble. And my mother was just... See, I come home during the winter months. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't too well, but... She lasted until 1978. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'll tell you why I thought an awful lot about my mother. She worked in the soap mills for me when I was a kid. Then she come down here with her sister and worked in the GE and got a job, made some money to make sure that I had enough for clothing and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. She was a great mother, mm -hmm. and I knew that she loved me. Now, did you have any other brothers or sisters at all? No, I was the only child. Okay. But. 
I took care of my mother. She got sick. I took care of her lock, stock, and barrel for almost, I think it was something like six years. Mm -hmm. I used to buy her, well, she lives upstairs where my son rents a room for me now. Mm -hmm. I made sure she had enough groceries every week of the year. Mm -hmm. I gave her a carton of cigarettes every month. She smoked Chesterfield. Her husband, yeah, her husband died resulting from a car accident that they were in. Mm -hmm. Okay, now who did you go to work for? I went to work went to work for Scott Paper. It was a Marinette Paper Company. Mm -hmm. and, and how long did you work for them for? I think seven years. Now, I made big money back then because I was ambitious. You worked a lot of overtime? Oh, I worked all the time overtime. Mm -hmm. One year, 1950, I drew a check clear for $159. Mm -hmm. When I showed it to a couple of my neighbors, they thought I stole it. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't think it was possible. Now, after you worked for the paper company, you said you were there for seven years. Where did you work next? I think Commercial Credit Corporation. Mm -hmm. That was... Uh, Twenty years. Okay. Now, did you retire from them, or? Yes, I retired. How long have you been retired? Uh, you know, I don't even know. Okay. But I wound up the CEO there. Did you really? Yes. And they wrote me a, a beautiful letter about six months after stating at uh, the headquarters which were down in Delaware mm -hmm. stating that all the uh, schooling I took from them mm -hmm. at their request to be a good finance man was quite a bit and they figured it out that I had earned a four-year degree in college mm -hmm. equivalency to that year in college and I don't know where the letter is today but they said
said that in their mind, in the business world, I would be proud to have a four-year degree, and they were offering it to me. Oh, that's so I accepted it. Okay. Um, now, did, did you join any veterans groups at all? No. No. Did you uh, keep in touch with anyone you were in the service with? I kept in touch with the fellows that uh, used to stop and see me and talk to me. Mm -hmm. I did that. And I always believed in, in the veterans. Okay. Now, uh, if you would, I'm going to have you hold up uh, this picture here, and you want to uh, talk about these a little bit? Do you want to uh, tell us when and where they were taken? This one, you can read, it's in the Philippines. Okay. All right, do you want to hold that yeah. up? Okay, so, so you were you were boxing in the Philippines? Yes. Okay. And Manila, and uh, New Guinea. And New Guinea, okay. Yes. All right. And that was taken when, 1945? 40, well, 44 and 45. Okay. Now the other, the other shot, you're in a football uniform. Was when was that taken? That was taken in the Philippines. Or, or this one here in the high? I thought that was your high school number, football. Number twelve. No, wait a minute. No. I want to make sure I got the right one here. Oh, it's a good thing I look around. Somewhere in the Philippines is this, this one. The boxing one. The boxing one. You, you take a look at this. you got better eyesight than I. I have okay. glasses. I don't have them. Up, okay. up there. Is that 45? It says somewhere in the Philippines. Yes. Uh, 126, 1945. Yeah. And this was you in high school? That's me in high school. In high school? Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to have you hold up another picture. Now, is that you down here? That's me. Okay, you want to hold that up and is that your family? No, that's other members. Okay, and that's you in the lower left hand corner. Yeah. Or lower right hand corner. Lower right hand corner. Okay. All right. And there are other family members? No. Okay. All right. And uh, if you'll hold up your discharge paper, I'll zoom in on that. Now, I have two diplomas. I have a war service diploma. And then I went back to school in Glens Falls and took a test and passed that with flying collars. And they sent me another diploma. Oh, okay. All right. Let me zoom in on this here. I'll hold that up.
Okay, and can you, the bottom part, it's, can you hold that up a little higher? And your date of discharge, 27 January 1946. Okay. Okay. All right, that should do it. Okay. Okay, well, th thank you very much for your interview. How do you think the uh, time in this service uh, changed or affected your life? Well, it made a man out of me for one thing. And I, I did enjoy, for instance, uh, watching the... the uh, Watching the, what you would call it. The, the end of the war, the signing of the, yeah, the, the peace treaty. Yeah. And you got to do a lot of boxing. Yes. And you met a lot of people. Yes. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much. Okay.